Hey YouTube, uh, if you saw yesterday I did a, collect, a video collection of all my bases, well the first one of all my bases, the first 10 or 11 or 12, whatever it was, uh, and one of them was my Hondo professional base, um, I did a wee, did a wee bit of research, um, I've noticed I haven't actually done a video of this base for years, I did it when I very first got it, but back then um, I didn't have a decent mic so it sounded shit. This is a model H1011. Um, there's a a page, if you look up that number, you will find a page from Samic, uh, Samic Wikipedia or something it's called, and I'm not 100% sure it's really that right, but some of it makes sense. So like with all the stuff you find online, information about old guitars and stuff like that, take them all with a pinch of salt because some of them are just not, you know. Hmm. Um, so it, it claims there was uh, like three versions of this particular guitar, and um, this particular bass was this one. I think it was an H1012 or something like that, which had two P bass pickups. And there was an eight string bass version as well, which I've never actually seen, but I mean, I do believe it probably did exist. Um, this, I, I think it says it's from 1980, but I'll get this magazine, which I borrowed off my pal um, James, very kindly let me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to scan it in, I just haven't yet worked out how to use my scanner. And not bothered Mars to do it yet. So this is from October 1980, and there's introducing the professional series. Um, if you look there, this one here is probably this base. Um, very much. You can see that they've got the Hondo 2 logo on it. Um, whereas mine has the the Hondo Rising Sun logo, which came out later on. You see that on an awful lot more later on Hondos, like the Korean ones. This one, however, is Japanese. And again, as I just said about all information you find online, um, pinch of salt might not be 100% correct, but as far as I'm aware and I think, this was made by Matsumoku, uh, even though my pal reckons that this, there's no way it possibly could have been, um, because the serial number doesn't doesn't line up with one of their systems, 1060448. But um, I still think it probably is. Um, so as, as I said in the, the previous video, these were um, Samic were a Korean, uh, Hondo were a Korean company who went to Japan for a couple of years got some a sort of, a sort of Gibson-y type range of guitars and basses and a sort of Fender type guitars and basses and apparently Matsumoku did the sort of Gibson-y ones and Tokai made the sort of Fender-y ones and then they took all the information that they had learnt from that just how, how to make great guitars and then started making their own back in Korea sort of so this one is a sort of double cut, double, a double cut Les Paul sort of shape. Um, I would, this one was black, but it had, at some point it had stickers on it in the past, and someone had, which often happens with these things, if it's got stickers on it, then that's fine. But if it's had stickers, and someone decided to try and take the, pick, the stickers off with a knife, you end up with horrendous scratching, which is what this suffered from. Um, if you use, if you, you spend ages at it and use like lighter fluid you can get most stickers off without damaging the paint or the damaging the surface um wasn't the case of this one i wasn't really that keen on black either uh something about black guitars i used to think it was because i always wore black t-shirts and it's like when i was looking in the mirror watching myself play the guitar like we all do you know um you couldn't see the actual guitar whereas now i generally don't buy black t-shirts unless i can avoid it if i've got a choice about bright colours because I'm genie and lovely. So I painted this sort of like a tiger um, by basically just ta taping it off, cutting the tape off and then spray painting it orange. Um, so the, the black is still the original black. It comes with what that uh, page I looked up says it's got uh, DiMarzio pickups, which I'm, I'm still not sure. There's a bit of a grey area about DiMarzio pickups. Apparently DiMarzio at one point in the 80s weren't made in America, they were actually made in Japan by Goto, G-O-T-O-H. So like official, actual, proper DiMarzios were made in Japan, so they don't say DiMarzio made in the USA on the back. I don't know how true these things are. They certainly look like DiMarzios and sound as far as I know, like them. I do have a base that definitely does have DiMarzio pickups, and they don't say made in the USA on the back either, so it's, it's open for speculation, but they're pretty much similar. And it's got, um, I think these are probably the original knobs, it's got like sort of wee notches on them. I don't know if I can hold them up high enough. My favourite kind of knobs. No, it's, it's just washed out. Um, it's got a three-point bridge, which is exactly the same as what you get on Epiphone EBOs. 
Um, there, it's pretty much identical. I know that because this is actually an Epiphone bridge that I put on this because my Aria PB1500 had a problem with its, its original bridge which was sort of bent because of the curvature of the top or because of the way it had been set up over the years. So I took the bridge off this one which was exactly the same as one that was on the Aria PB but on that, then I, put, I bought an Epiphone replacement for this. It fits exactly, it's exactly the same. So they still, whatever it was, the design was, they still make it. And even the saddles on this one are the same. These are these are black because they were from a black Epiphone bridge. Um, it's a bolt on neck. Oops. Uh, it's got a cool sort of extra heel bit here, which kind of extends up, making it a bit of a smooth transition. Got a decent, it's got a bad uh, connector on it, which I should probably fix. These tuners are actually pretty good. But um, as a warning, I have seen tuners that look exactly the same as these that are absolutely shit. The way, I, the major difference, apart from the quality, by looking at them was see the ones I had before on a, it was, it was a Japanese base, it was an Avon. Actually, I had two Avon bases, one of them was shit, one of them was amazing. Um, see the screw, the four screws on it? This has got four screws. See the cheap copies? It looks like it's got four screws, but two of the screws are actually just molded into the metal. They're like a design feature and only two screws actually hold it on and it was, although they looked exactly the same as this, they were made of really thin metal and they were crap. They, you know, they, they just, they creaked and they snapped. So they might have even had plastic, you know, like chrome coated plastic uh, buttons on them, if I remember correctly. So just as a, as a warning for these, just because they look like that doesn't mean they're good, but they can be good. They seem to be fine. Um, as you can see, it's got a three piece neck, the way Matsumoku did, the idea there being that, so they don't warp because they were sending them over from Japan to America and Europe and um, they had to be super super strong so if you've got like one piece of wood it might warp whereas if you've got one piece of wood with the grain running that way and then two pieces of wood stuck on either side with the grain running the opposite way it's much less likely to twist and warp so that's what, what uh, why they, they did this it's a 32 inch scale which is sort of in the middle between a short scale and a long scale and a like a P base and EBO halfway in the middle EBO being 30 and a P bass being 34, or jazz bass. Yeah, so that's kind of it. It's just going to be a short video. So I'm playing through my Marshall after the end. B50, B150. the fact that a piece of paper fell off the roof 
you probably notice they're getting a little bit lighter. I've got some using bits of paper to filter out that light, the light I've got shining on me. I'm going to put on things that are incredibly bassy. It fell off the roof, so no biggie. Right, try to keep this video down, so I'll stop playing it. Um, yeah, so P bass pickup is my favourite type of pickup to have in a bass. It just sounds fantastic. It does everything that I would want it to. Um, this bass, I think at some point, well, it's got a, a, a hole here for a strap button. So I think I moved the strap button from here to here to help with the balance issue. It's still slightly neck heavy, but not, not a lot. You know, it's like that's it's not, maybe if you used a, like a, a grippier strap, it wouldn't slip at all. It doesn't feel neck heavy. You're not, you know, you're not constantly fighting with it. Um, what I was thinking as well is that it's also got. I notice it's got a, a strap button here. So I think at some point someone's been playing this. Has, has been set up as a left-handed bass, and what I was thinking, see. The way I'm playing, see if these knobs were here, they wouldn't really get in the way very much. So I reckon if you're a lefty, you would get away with just having this. And all you'd have to obviously change the the nut to take the strings the other way. And uh, the saddles, they come out. They're, you know, they're sitting on top of this bridge. So even though obviously there's a wider slot on the the fat string than there is the thing. So you just swap them around. It'd be pretty easy and, and, and tone it up. And basically you'd just have a perfect left-handed bass. And the only thing you would have is that the knobs would be here but that wouldn't really get doesn't really get in the way the way i play i don't know maybe it would if you played you know like in some ways but for me it would that wouldn't be an issue um so it would work well as a left-handed bass i think um and it's that my, my main issue is maybe it's not the prettiest shape i mean the fact that this one's painted like a tiger gives it you know kind of takes away from that but there's a double cut, there's something, it's not nearly as pretty as the Washburn wings, which I've got, which are sort of similar sort of shape, but they're kind of, so there's just something not quite right about it. I think if I was making this, going back in time to 1980, whenever it was they were making, you know, so 1980, 1981, 1982, that sort of era is when they made these, only for a couple of years, um, I would have made it less pole shaped. I would have had a... You know, I wouldn't have a cut away on the top. And if you if if you'd made this as a Les Paul base, it would be worth loads of money just now because everyone would want a Les Paul looking base. It would look fantastic. Um, they did at the time do a guitar version of this, which pretty much looks the same. And uh, as I showed you in that picture, there was a couple of guitar versions. There was one that looked basically the same as this, and then there was one that had uh, stringers. So it looked like a through neck, even though it was still a bolt neck. I had, you know, sometimes you get the through neck where you can see the stripes down the middle of the body. It kind of looked like that. I've actually done a video of that. It's a 1030, I think. Um, one, of, one of my highest, highest doing videos. It's not my guitar, my pal Andy's. Um, who actually bought one of these as well. But his has got the Hondo 2 on the top and it's identical base. His is uh, sort of sunburst and it's got a sunburst head as well. So it's probably, it's a prettier one than the black one, but it's, it's exactly the same base. I mean... The consistency they had at this point is amazing. You know, sometimes you get guitars these days, you know, it's like you can pick up one Squire and it's fucking awful. And then you pick one exactly the same model and it's really good. Whereas these, I mean, this one is exactly the same as Andy's. You know, there's no way, unless you could, if you feel mine, you can sort of feel there's a wee bit of 3D-ness where the paint goes over. But if you put the same strings on it and you weren't allowed to rub your hand in the body, you couldn't tell the difference. I couldn't tell the difference between this and my pal's one. You know, they're identical. Um, fantastic. Bases. Uh, just be wary of uh, other hondos that uh, you don't. They don't. Um, they're not necessarily made in Japan. And just because they, you know you get sort of Les Paul ones, there's a lot of Les Paul ones that are really shit. I had a really bad one at one point. Um, it kind of looked like a Les Paul from a distance, but every part of it was awful. It was just, uh, so be, just be a wee bit wary. They do make good later on the Korean ones as well. You know they do make decent Korean Les Pauls. I think I've actually got another one from another one of my pals. It's a sort of stripey looking one. It's actually a pretty good guitar. It's as good as any Epiphone. Um, so, good fun. Right, so I'm trying to keep the time down. So 14 minutes is still not really, not really, it's not really a short video, is it? I'll make it up to 15.
50 minutes. Cool. Rock on. And uh, yes, you do see quite a lot of these kicking about. Um, just no one's ever got the name of it. I didn't know it was a, an H1011 until yesterday, uh, yesterday when I looked it up. So it would just be called a Hondo Deluxe. And there's lots. And if it, if it looks like this one, it says a professional. It says, but if it looks like this one, it is this one. Um, I've never seen a later on Korean one or anything like that or any, any copies of it. If it's this base, it's just this one and they're all the same. And I think it sold really well because it's just, a, I think they were quite cheap when they came out, to be honest. But I mean, quality wise, it's a proper pro level base. I would have no issues at all gigging with this. I think the band might have a little bit of issues me playing in a Black Sabbath band with this, you know, it's all meant to be doom and gloom and I've got like a sort of Steel Panther, Dave Lee Roth looking ridiculous super 80s turbo metal, uh, hair metal bass, but hey, rock and roll, so I didn't manage 15 minutes, 16 minutes, see you later.